has never been more necessary to have the voice of this movement on television because the first target that I want to concentrate on this evening is the British media. The BBC, which we called the Bush and Blair Corporation <laughs> during the run up to the Iraq war, has become the English language arm of the Israeli Defense Force during this invasion. business of appealing to unlikely listeners, like the trade union friends of Israel, let me appeal to the journalists, the decent journalists in the BBC, to insist that those who are keeping the journalists out of the Gaza Strip are not allowed to dictate the terms of reference made by the BBC. targeting Hamas militants in Gaza. How can a warship barking its lead and fire onto a beach and beyond be said to be targeting anything? How could a tank which were first used in the First World War and whose essential armament has not changed it raises its barrel and it fires. How could an artillery piece, equally using essentially the same targeting as it did a century or more ago, be said to be targeting anything? And how can anybody be said to be targeting when more than 300 women and children have been killed so far in this moment? Palestinian fighter, a militant. As has been said, these people are the legitimate armed forces of the elected government of Palestine. As for, their, as for their tunnels, well, they wouldn't need tunnels if they were receiving right off the assembly lines of the arms manufacturers of the United States and Great Britain, the latest armory the Muslim people with. And I want to talk about the government too. Those of you who have seen some of the internet traffic today will know that we are locked yet again with a government minister who doesn't want us to walk on the grass in the Royal Park at Kensington Gardens. You'll remember Tessa Jowell before the February 15th demonstration, the biggest in British history, said that we couldn't get into Hyde Park because we might damage the grass. <laughs> Somebody called Andy Burnham, unlikely I know as the Secretary of State for Culture, Media and Sport in this country, says no, we can't enter Kensington Gardens because it's a royal park. Well, as I said to Tessa Jowell back then, you could choose. You can have a million people in Hyde Park or you can have a million angry people on the streets of London instead. understands the terrifying risks that it is running with the policy that it is pursuing. You've heard me say here before, they're always looking for some Muslim cleric to ban, some Muslim organization to proscribe, some hapless imam to blame for the radicalization of Muslim youth. How radical do you think Muslims in Britain are feeling after two whole weeks of watching this slaughter in Palestine? And you 
beware of the weasel words of this government when you hear them say, though it took them three days to say it, that there should be a ceasefire. I'll tell you the ceasefire they mean. They mean a ceasefire that sees the surrender of the legitimate resistance of the Palestinian people, the destruction of their ability to resist any further. The only moderate Palestinian for the British government is a Palestinian who follows Israel's orders. I tell you this, the ceasefire they have in mind is a surrender and the Palestinian people will never surrender. Victory to the Palestinian resistance. Victory to the Palestinian resistance. That some people couldn't get any lower. Up pops David Aronovich in the Times to virtually accuse us of anti-Semitism. <laughs> Let me say this to him, he won't be here either. <laughs> but he'll definitely hear about this. Let me say to Mr. Aronovich, we are not saying this is the Holocaust. The Holocaust in which 10 million people perished, 6 million of them Jews, in a systematic industrialized attempt to annihilate from the face of the earth an entire people. But it was the Deputy Defense Minister of Israel itself who promised the Palestinians a Shoah, a Holocaust, just a few months ago. We're not saying this is the Holocaust, but the people of Gaza are in exactly the position that the Jews in the Warsaw Ghetto were in the early summer. We're not, saying, we're not saying that the Israelis are Nazis. We're not saying that. But collective punishment of a captive population is a Nazi tactic which should be seen without delay. is this, and I echo something my friend John Rees said at the demonstration on Saturday. The road to the liberation of Jerusalem runs through Cairo. There is no possibility of this small Palestinian people resisting this behemoth. There is no possibility of them liberating their country as long as the puppet presidents and the corrupt kings who rule the Arab world almost without exception from one end to the other continue to rule. So, as far as I say now, again, what I said on Saturday, it's time for the great people of Egypt the people of Abdel Nasser, the people of the victories of 1973, to rise up and sweep away the tyrant Mubarak, the collaborator Mubarak, the accomplice, the martyr Mubarak. The great name of Egypt is being dragged through the mud by this 99.9% .9 of the vote dictator. And it's time for everyone's sake that the tyrant must fall. Lastly, I'll be there on Saturday. So must you. This has the feel of a surging movement of people of all kinds in this country. It can be a rebirth following our defeat in 2003. We have to help these Palestinians who have been abandoned by virtually everyone else. Do you know that in the Westfield shopping center, in Blue Water, in the shopping centers all around Greater London, there are people who have set up inside 
something called the Israel shop, which has stolen goods grown on stolen land on sale and people moving amongst the crowds, talking to them about how Israel has made the desert bloom. We have to march, yes, but we have to target Israeli products in every shop that's selling them and wipe this fur out of our retail sector. The anti-apartheid movement was victorious between the hammer of the resistance of the African National Congress and the anvil of an educated, motivated mass movement of people all around the world. That's our job. Thank you very much.